Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. Yeah. The Kraft Cheese Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products, presents Harold Perry as The Great Gildersleeve. Kraft brings you The Great Gildersleeve every week at this time, written by John Wheaton and Sam Moore. We'll hear from the great Gildersleeve in just a moment. Instead of playtime vacations this summer, millions of older boys and girls, and grown-ups too, will pitch in to help our farmers and our nation's industries meet increased production quotas. Now that's going to call for extra energy, and here's an economical food that provides energy galore. It's parquet margarine. Yes, parquet margarine, the delicious spread for bread made by Kraft. It's one of the best energy foods you can serve. And besides furnishing energy, every pound of parquet margarine contains 9,000 units of vitamin A. Now, that's important, too, because every time you spread appetizing parquet margarine on bread or biscuits, rolls, and muffins, you add nourishing goodness to these other wholesome foods. So, for energy, for vitamin A, and for a delicious flavor that's sure to satisfy, buy and serve economical parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine. Remember, Kraft makes this nutritious spread for America's bread. Yes, Kraft makes parquet. Now, on to Summerfield, home of the great Gildersleeve. His campaign for mayor has been going like a house of fire all week. Yes, there's been a big swing to Gildersleeve, so perhaps he may be forgiven a slight swagger as he strolls home from the office, accompanied by his campaign manager, and drops in at his headquarters over the barber shop. Uh, did you see how the indicator's pull came out, Judge? Yes, I saw it. Pretty nice, eh? All it gives you is a bare majority. Yep, there's nothing bare about it. 53 to 47. That's a bigger lead than the indicator gave Landon in 1936. Well, don't let it go to your head. Come on in. Leroy. Oh, hi, Al. Take your feet off that desk. Okay. How do you think that looks, sitting here in my headquarters reading comic books? What are you doing here, anyway? Yeah, where is everybody? Where's Mrs. Banks? I thought she was on duty here this afternoon. Well, Mrs. Banks had to go to a funeral, so she got March to take her place. Well, then where's Marjorie? Well, she wanted to get her hair washed. Why today, for goodness sake? On account of Miss Goodwin and her mother coming to dinner. Oh, so I very kindly offered to substitute for her. Oh, my goodness. She better pay me, too. <laughs> <laughs> Judge, I ask you, is this any way to run a campaign? Is it? It's your campaign, Gildy. And it's your nephew. Yes, and you're supposed to be my manager. What are you worrying about? You've already got a bigger plurality than Landon. <laughs> yeah, old goat. See that you stick around here till someone arrives to take over the desk. Come along, Leroy. We've got to get home to dinner. But, Gildy, what about the meeting of the finance committee? Can't make it, Judge. Confound it, Gildy. You know the game is no good with less than four. Yep, sorry, Judge. I have a little political work to attend to at home. What's that? My future mother-in-law. She's meeting the family for the first time. <laughs> I want you to watch your manners tonight. I always do. Well, watch them a little more closely, then. I want you to make a good impression. Say, Unc. Yes? When are you going to do it? Huh? Do what? Get married. Oh, well, I guess I told you. Your Auntie Eve and I have a little understanding about that. As soon as I'm elected mayor. If not sooner. You mean you might get married right away? Well, the primaries are only ten days from now. If I get the nomination, I'm as good as elected. So I put it off. She. Yes. I'll tell you a little secret, my boy. That's why Miss Goodwin's mother is visiting her now. That's why she's coming to dinner tonight, to meet the family and sort of look us over. Yeah? And what if she doesn't like us? <laughs> of course she'll like us, Leroy. It's up to you and up to Marjorie and all of us to see that she does. And you like her, too. You like her fine. How do you know? Because if you don't, I'll break your little neck. <laughs> now get along. Bertie, what's for dinner? We got special company tonight, you know. Yes, sir, and I've got a special roast of pork. Roast of pork? Oh, that's wonderful. 
I don't suppose you've got any applesauce to go with it. <laughs> well, I wasn't born yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness, I should have told you. What? Miss Goodwin's mother can't eat pork. Can't eat pork? No, it doesn't agree with her, Bertie. She's on a diet. Uh, is there anything else you could give her? Well, I could open up a can of beans, I guess. No, oh, not beans, Bertie. She can't eat beans either. No beans. Hmm. I suppose I could boil up a poached egg. Yes, no eggs, Bertie. Eggs poison her. Hmm. Doesn't leave much choice, does it? Don't leave any. Yes. Well, you think up something, Bertie. I'll leave it to you. I know I can depend on you. Hey, Bertie, can I have something to eat? I'm starved. Leroy, close that door. You want the smell of food to get all over the house? Might as well give her a smell. She can't eat nothing. <laughs> I'm dying. Not before dinner, Leroy. It's almost ready. But I'm dying. I doubt that. Where's Marjorie? She'll be down in a minute. Have you washed your hands? Yes. We'll go wash them. Okay. <laughs> I'll wash you, beautiful. What's me? Leroy, the door. Oh, sorry. Well, my dear. Hello. You're looking radiant this evening. You think so? Thank you. Never seen you looking better. Come on, kiss your old Uncle Mort. Oh. Marjorie. What is it? What have you got on your lips? Oh, Uncle Mort, everybody uses lipstick. Not my niece. Well, I've been using it for months. Shows how much attention you pay to me. Well, this is different. Eve is coming here this evening, and her mother. What will she think? Well, don't ask me. Your own daughter uses it. Eve? Certainly. I've never noticed it on her. I've noticed it on you. <laughs> Bertie, I don't see anything to laugh at. You would if you had to wash your shirt collars. <laughs> Uh-oh, the front door. That's them. Let Bertie go, Marjorie. Huh? No, I'll go. Let Bertie go. Now, you finish the dinner, Bertie. Marjorie and I'll go. How do I look, Marjorie? Oh, you look fine, only... Wait a minute. Yeah? What for? Come back here. Why? Lipstick. Oh. <laughs> Wait, Leroy. Well... Eve. Hello, darling. Mother, you know Throckmorton. Why, of course. I'm so glad to see you again, my boy. My boy? <laughs> so glad you could come, uh, Mother. Mother? There's an echo in here. <laughs> I'd like to have you meet my niece, Marjorie. How charming. How do you do, Mrs. Goodwin? May I take your wrap? And how well trained. Such nice manners. You know, my dear, there's a little girl just about your age in the neighborhood where I live. I see her riding past every morning on her bicycle. I don't ride a bicycle anymore. I gave mine away when I outgrew it several years ago. <laughs> How they do grow up, don't they? <laughs> yes. How about the wrap? Oh, 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 yes, sir. There you are, my dear. Thank you. And who's this little man? He seems to be hiding. Uh, well, this is my nephew, Leroy. Oh, little Leroy. Say, how do you do to Mrs. Goodwin? How do you do, Mrs. Goodwin? <laughs> That's the way. You're not going to be afraid of me, are you? No. Nope. Well, of course not. I love little boys. You and I are going to be great friends. I just know it. After dinner, you must take me upstairs and show me your toys. Toys? Uh, oh, he'd love to do that, I'm sure. Well, here we are, standing out here in the cold. Only it isn't very cold, is it? No, it's been rather warm today. Too warm. <laughs> well, let's go inside where it's cool, shall we? <laughs> After you, Eve. Uh, after you, Mother. Oh, thank you, Throckmorton. Say, Unc. What is it? Is she kidding? <laughs> you be polite to her, young man, and don't let me hear any more talk like that. Now get in there. Well, I want to tell you, I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep, I was just a wreck. My friend Mrs. Kohler came to see me while I was there, and she said she had just never seen anyone look so awful. Oh, well, do you know, they kept me under observation there for two solid weeks. Had me, but uh, then I... No more, thank you, no more. Uh, two whole weeks. Well, of course, I didn't say anything, but I could just see they weren't getting anywhere. And that was when my son called in Dr. Farrer. I just said to him, and uh, Dr. Farrer should come to see me. And I said to my son, Hi. I wish you'd come... Hello, Sarah Norton. Uh, well, sir, I want to tell you from that moment I was a different woman after Dr. came. A different woman. I simply swear by Dr. Farrow now. It's just been so wonderful, I can't tell you. And then he told me thank you. He said, Mrs. Goodwin, you're lucky to be alive today, and I suppose I am. Of course, I'll always have to be careful, but I don't complain. 
You will have to say that for me, Eve. I don't complain. No, Mother very seldom complains. Oh, that's fine. Uh, oh, but gracious, here I've done all the talking. Now, Mr. Gildersleeve, you talk. Huh? Tell us about something. Uh, well, I, I, I hardly know what to tell you about. I saw a movie yesterday, The Fighting CB. Super. It's all about this guy. He didn't have the right attitude. Uh, not just now, Leroy. Some other time, my boy. Oh, do you allow Leroy to go to motion pictures? Well, he isn't always allowed, but he seems to go. <laughs> I suppose you saw Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs then. Didn't you just love it? Well... Uh, let's go into the other room, shall we? Yes, let's go. Um... Uncle Maud, if you'll excuse me, I think I'll be going up to bed now. Why, Marjorie, so early? Aren't you feeling well? Oh, I feel fine, but uh, it's been a hard day, and I think I'll just go up, if you don't mind. Yeah, me too, Unc. Hard day. I'm kind of tired. Huh? <laughs> Good night, everyone. Good, Good night, night, Mrs. Goodwin. Good night, Miss Goodwin. Good night, Marjorie. You must come and see me. I'll see if I can't find a little present for you. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night, Leroy. Oh, oh wait just a minute, Leroy. What for? I'm coming up with you. What? Wouldn't you like me to tuck you in and hear your prayers and maybe tell you a story? I always used to do that for Eve. Oh, oh gosh, Mrs. Goodwin, you don't need to do that. Uh, I'll be all right. You stay down here and let entertain Unc. You stay right there. <laughs> Dear, I don't like to eat and run, but I'm afraid it's our bedtime, too. Oh, now, wait a minute. You can't go this early. It is early, Mother. Only 8.30. Now, now, you know what I've always told you, my dear. Tomorrow is another day. But 8.30? Uh, I always make it a point to be in bed by 9 o'clock sharp. What for? So I can be up bright and early next morning. Hmm. <laughs> I'll go get my wrap. But, Eve, the evening hasn't even begun. Now, darling, Mother's tired. Couldn't we put your mother to bed and then step out? Oh, I wouldn't want to leave her alone. Well, gosh, she's old Tomorrow's to... Saturday, dear. We'll have a whole nice long day together, if you wish. Just you and I. Oh, uh, you mean it, Eve. We could take a lunch, maybe, and go somewhere. Maybe Grass Lake or... Oh, let me help you with your wrap, oh, Mrs. Goodman. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Well, we've just had the nicest evening, haven't we, Eve? Yes, we have. I don't know when I've had a better time. Me either. <laughs> Of course, I'm afraid I've talked too much. Talked to not at all. <laughs> good night. Oh, good night. Come along, Eve. Tomorrow is another day. You'll forgive Mother, won't you, darling? She's so excited. I think your mother is a fine person, Eve. I like her. I'm glad. Evie, darling, tomorrow is another day. She's a fine person, but if she says that once more... I'll... <laughs> good night, Eve. Good night, Mother. Good night. Good night. <sighs> 8.30. Could go down to the drugstore, but Peavy's just about closing up. Might go down to headquarters. No, I don't want to do that. Hmm. I wonder what Leela's doing. I see her lights on over there. I better go to bed. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just a few seconds. Now that Gildy's election campaign is in full swing, we'd like to do a little campaigning of our own for a food highly qualified to help in serving your family's nutritional needs. Our candidate is Parquet Margarine, and here are its qualifications. Is it the popular favorite? Yes, ma'am. Millions of American families have voted Parquet a favorite spread for bread. Does it taste good? Mmm, does it ever. You're sure to enjoy Parquet's delicate, appetizing flavor. Is it nourishing? Yes, indeed. Parquet margarine is one of the best energy foods you can eat. And Kraft fortifies parquet margarine so that every pound contains 9,000 units of important vitamin A. Of course, parquet margarine is economical, too. And it now requires only two ration points a pound. So tomorrow, mark a big X on your shopping list for parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine. Remember, Kraft makes parquet. Let's get back to our friend, the great Gildersleeve. It's Saturday morning, and he's up early in anticipation of a long day of pleasure. We find him now smartly dressed for a day in the country with a picnic basket over his arm, arriving at Eve Goodwin's front door. Embrace me, da-dee-dee-dee, da-da-da-dee. 
So. Oh, good morning, Mother. Good morning, Throckmorton. Come right in and make yourself at home. Oh, thank you. I'll do that little thing. You can set the picnic basket right here. Thank you. You're looking mighty chipper this morning, Mother. Well, that's just the way I feel. I felt so good I got up at 6 o'clock. Oh, bright and early. Yes, indeed. I made my bed, uh, that is, after my exercises, and then I came right down. Uh, exercises? You don't do those deep knee bends and all that. Oh, no. I just do abdominal breathing every morning by an open window. It's wonderful for you. Oh, I suppose so. I just breathe the regular way myself, lungs. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I'm sure my method would help you. I think you're the abdominal type. Oh. Uh, well, these trousers are a little tight. <laughs> well, it's a fine day for a picnic, isn't it? Lovely. Uh, Mother, you're sure that you'll be able to find plenty to do here all day, all by yourself? Oh, Mercy Throckmorton, you don't have to worry about me. I can find millions of things to do around this house. And besides, I know how young people are. <laughs> By George, you're one mother-in-law in a million. Well, good morning, Throckmorton. Oh, hello, Eve. <laughs> Throckmorton just paid me a very pretty compliment, dear. Oh, really? Should I be jealous? Oh, I don't think you'll have to worry. <laughs> well, Eve, all ready for a happy day at Grass Lake? Oh, I hope so, dear. But there are some things I've just got to do first. Oh? Huh? Uh, what things? I've got to do a little shopping with Mother. But you promised, Eve. Your mother doesn't want to go shopping anyway. She just wants to clean the house, exercise, and weed the garden. She just told me. Well, maybe she does, but there are one or two things she's got to have. No, Eve, I don't really. Mother, you've got to have a hat. I can't let another day go without buying you a hat. But, Eve, I've got a picnic lunch in the car. We ought to get started. Throckmorton, do you want Mother running around town looking like a scarecrow? (laughs) Well, I don't. Come on, you can drive us down to Hogan Brothers. It shouldn't take long. Oh, Throckmorton, what can we do? I've never been able to argue with Eve. <laughs> Neither have I. Now, Mother, you're being a little difficult. I think that hat's perfectly adorable on you. Oh, I'm sorry, dear, but I think it makes me look too young. Oh, Mother, that's silly. What do you think, Throckmorton? Oh, looks fine to me. (laughs) Throckmorton wants me to look giddy, I'm afraid. Uh, What about the broad brim model, Mother? I don't like that one at all. Do you like it, Throckmorton? Huh? Oh, I think it's perfect. (laughs) I think it makes me look like a mushroom. Have you anything else, miss? Well, I really don't know what else to show you, madam. These are all the models we have. Uh, let me look at that straw we tried first. I like that. Oh, Eve, I don't like straw hats. They always make me sneeze. Oh, mother, that's something you've just got fixed in your mind. Nobody could possibly be allergic to straw hats. Uh, what's the matter with the little blue hat, Eve? The blue one? I never even considered that a possibility. Mother, will you try this one with the feather, please? Oh, I've told you, Eve, a feather makes me look too tall. We could remove the feather, madam. And she'd look too short. <laughs> Why don't you cut the feather in half? <laughs> Doc Morton, huh? don't try to be funny. Can't you cooperate? But Eve, Eve, I... here's a hat I really like. Oh, well, do let me see. Oh, dear, how did she find that? That's my hat. Huh? Uh, if she likes it, miss, sell it to her. I'll give you an extra five dollars. You will? Yeah. Just watch me. Well, I must say, this is the only hat I've seen here that's worth trying on. Well, I'm sorry I didn't show it to you before, madam. It only came in this morning. It's uh, copied from a Paris exclusive. Yes, smuggled out by the underground. <laughs> I think it's just my type, Eve, don't you? Exactly. Don't you think so, Throckmorton? Oh, like it was made for her. Wrap it up, miss. Why don't you wear it, Mother, and let her send your old hat? Yes, that's even better. How much is it? Fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars? Does that include uh, everything? Yes, sir. Uh, Oh, well. (laughs) Here. (laughs) Come on, ladies. We'll get started. Uh, Wait a minute, Throckmorton. What's it now? I I want to look at Mother for just a minute. Oh, yes, I was afraid so. Eve, the hat is perfect. Oh, yes, but her dress. What's the matter with the dress? It doesn't go with the hat. Come on up to the next floor, Mother. Oh, my goodness. Well, go ahead and buy her an outfit. Buy her the whole store. When you get through, you'll find me at Peavy's. Have a pickle, Peavy? No, no, thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. 
I agree with pickles, but they uh, don't agree with me. How about a turkey sandwich? Oh, I'm, I'm not very hungry, thank you. You appear to be stuck with a picnic lunch, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, stuck is the word, Peavy. I was hoping to spend the day at Grass Lake with my fiance. Well, you couldn't have a nicer day for it. Uh, mother-in-law trouble? Well, I suppose you could call it that, Peavy. Although I don't know. I think the old lady would have let us go. She said, go on, enjoy yourselves. I know how it is with young people. <laughs> they say that. <laughs> You know, Mr. Gildersleeve's mother-in-laws say one thing and mean another. Oh? Well, how can you ever tell where you stand? <laughs> You'll get the hang of it. <laughs> I remember when Mother Horsefall visited me first with Miss Peavy. I, I always call her Mother Horsefall. Yes, I know, Peavy. Well, I used to have an easy chair I sat in after supper. Every night she used to say, it certainly is nice that Richard has that easy chair to sit in. Well, what's the matter with that? After supper, on about the fourth night, she sat in the chair. I didn't get another shot at it till she left. Hmm. When was that? She was there ten days to a day. <laughs> well, Eve's mother's only staying a few days, Petey. But I never get any time alone with Eve. Hmm. Uh, say, Mr. Gildersleeve, I, I wonder if a bird lecture wouldn't solve your problem this evening. Bird lecture? What the devil is that? Well, there's this fellow Professor Swallow gives a lecture on birds. He... <laughs> He's named after a bird himself. Yes, yes. I, I can see that, Peavy. Uh, what's the lecture? Well, he's giving it tonight at the YWCA. He gives it here every year. It's all about different kinds of birds and their habits and so on. Very educational. Sounds like the dullest way to spend an evening I ever heard of. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Although it's pretty close to it, I would admit. <laughs> A fellow whistles to imitate various bird calls. Sounds horrible, Peavy. I wouldn't want to take my girl to anything like that. Well, I wasn't thinking of that, Mr. Gildersleeve. But uh, how would it be for the old lady? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Peavy, you're a genius. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. <laughs> you think she'd like to go? Oh, she'll go, whether she likes to or not. I, uh, I wonder if she'd care to go with Mrs. Peavy. Just the thing. They could have a fine time together, Peavy. By George, I don't know how to thank you. Oh, don't thank me, Mr. Gildersleeve. We've got two tickets, and I've heard this fellow six years running. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're getting something out of it. I hope there'll be something in it for you, too. Oh. Well, don't worry, Peavy. We'll send the old lady to the bird lecture, and Eve and I'll stay home and play Love Nest. <laughs> Uh, well, you'll have to admit, Eve, this is pretty nice. Happy Throckmorton. What do you think? I'm sitting on a sofa with my best girl. You're sweet. I hope you weren't too disappointed about the trip to the lake, darling. Oh, I've forgotten all about it. And you're right, Eve. Your mother should have some new clothes. Don't you like her clothes, Throckmorton? Oh, sure. Only uh, I just think whatever you say is right. Oh, I was afraid you were criticizing Mother's wardrobe. Certainly not, my dear. Her clothes are fine. I hope she's having a good time at the lecture. She'll love it. Mrs. Peavy likes it. Your mother's bound to like it, isn't she? Well, not necessarily. Mother's not quite as old as Mrs. Peavy, Throckmorton. Oh, no, no, of course not. <laughs> but I imagine your mother likes birds, doesn't she? Well, I don't think she cares about them one way or the other. Do you uh, like Mother, Throckmorton? You do I? <laughs> she's a peach, Eve. She's true blue. Well, I'd feel very unhappy if I thought you didn't like Mother. Oh, I'm crazy about her, Eve. Why shouldn't I be? She's the old block that you're the chip off of. <laughs> Anybody would know you were her daughter. Really? I hope I look like Mother when I'm her age. Sure you will, but don't worry. That won't be for some time. <laughs> what did you say, Throckmorton? <laughs> Did I say something? Uh, no, I, I just meant that you'll be young for a long time, Eve. Young and beautiful, just like you are now. Do you really think I'm beautiful? I sure do. How about a kiss? Oh, it's too soon after dinner. Huh? <laughs> well, gosh, Eve, we haven't got all night. I mean, that fella can't keep talking about birds forever. I mean, oh, gosh, Eve, how about a kiss? 
<laughs> That's not a very romantic way to approach a girl, Throckmorton. Well, I can't be cagey all the time. <laughs> oh, no. Not cagey, romantic. I don't know how to be romantic. Oh, yes, you do. Sometimes you can be very sweet. Well, darn it, I feel sweet, but it's 9.30 already. Stop talking about the time. <laughs> huh? That's not sweet. I know. You're sweet, though, Eve. That's better. How would it be if I'd sing to you? I think that'd be very nice. Do you want me to play? Would you? I know a song I'd like to sing to you. Come over to the piano. If I know it, I'll play it. Oh, you know it. Um, deep in my heart, dear. Oh, yes, I like that. Uh? Deep in my heart, dear. I have a dream of you Fashioned of a starlight Perfume of roses and dew Our paths may sever But I'll remember forever Singing, please. You have a lovely voice. Well, thank you. What happened to the bird lecture? Oh, the magic lantern broke down. Do go on singing, Throckmorton. Oh, yes, Throckmorton. Sing something for Mother. Eve, where are you going? Just out to the kitchen. I'll be right back. <laughs> Sing something nice for me, Throckmorton. All right, Mother. What would you like? Well, let's see. Oh, one of my favorites is Polly Wally Doodle. Do you remember it? <laughs> yes, I remember ah, it. But... Now, don't be bashful. Come on. <laughs> Oh, I went down south for to see my gal. Come on, come on, Pop uh, Oh, I went down south for to see my gal sing Polly Wally Doodle all the day. My gal, she is a spunky gal. Sing Polly Wally Doodle all the day. Why, Frockmorton, what's the matter? I don't know. I want to go home. <laughs> Hello. Is this the depot? This is Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. I want to make a reservation on the 219 to Pittsfield next Wednesday. It's from my mother in law. Oh? Have you got anything on Wednesday? Have you got anything before Wednesday? <laughs> How about Thursday? Friday? I'd like a compartment. A lower would be all right. But how about an upper? Have you got a reclining day chair? <laughs> well, call me if you get anything. Hey, wait a minute. Is there any room in the baggage car? <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> Music on this program was directed by Claude Sweet. And this is Ken Carpenter speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. Kraft invites you to listen in again next week for the further adventures of the great Gilders League. When warm weather sends your family's appetite into a slump, liven up interest in foods with the taste-tingling flavored tang of Kraft Salad Mustard. Yes, you can get craft quality in mustard, too. And this light, golden, creamy, smooth salad mustard is spiced just right for most everyone's taste. You can serve craft salad mustard in dozens of appetite-rousing ways. Blend it into tasty relishes and sandwich fillings spread on sausage and cold meat cuts or added to salad dressings for extra flavor zest. What's more, craft salad mustard is grand to use in cooking. Blend it into a golden sauce for hot-cooked vegetables or add it to a tempting cheese fondue or Welsh rabbit. Then there's another craft quality mustard you'll want to try, a sharper variety with horseradish added. Buy them both for variety. Craft mustard with horseradish and that popular favorite tangy golden craft salad mustard. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>